You are in for a treat because today we are going to be painting the hellebore flower. Now let me tell you that this specific video is going to take you through my entire process from color selection to the different brush strokes to the method. You are going to really learn and pick up on all of those really juicy techniques and how to mix and match them as well as apply them on paper. Now I know many of you have requested for a real-time video and this is me showing up for you and committed to giving you that real-time video that you have been asking for. Welcome to my channel, my name is Gillian. I'm a full-time watercolour artist who is committed to help you to see the mess and magic of watercolour. Let's jump into today's tutorial. Hello, welcome to my channel. I am Gillian, and for those of you who are new to me, I'm also better known as Crafty Fox on Instagram. And today we are going to be discovering another flower from the Flower Color Guide. And I've been using this book as a reference for me to discover all the different flowers that I can paint. So today we are going to look at this flower, the Hellebore, and one thing that really drew me to this flower is how there are flowers that are facing in various directions. So this gives me an idea that we will be able to play with composition as well as playing with different directions by shifting the petals according to how long or short they are. And at the same time, when you look at this reference photo, you're also able to tell that there are parts of the flowers that are in the light and there are others that are in the shadow. So these are some of the key ideas that we have to think about when we are looking at a reference picture. For those of you who are following on and using this book, it is on page 327. I will also put it in the description below so that it's easy for you to use as a reference. So what we're going to do is I'm going to share with you what we're going to start off first when we are painting this flower. We're going to start off by painting the outside shape of the flowers first because they're all in the forefront. I'm going to make sure that the flowers that I want to be facing me and in front to be of bigger shape while the ones at the back are going to be smaller shape and more faint in colour. The next thing that we are going to paint after we have painted the outside shape of the flower would be we will start by adding some leaves and stems to give it some definition following which we will go into the details of the flowers and we will also be adding in the stamens. So these are the different stages in which we are going to go through as we are painting the flowers. Now I'm going to share with you the colours that we are going to be using. The paint that I'm using is from Sinalier and I'm going to be mixing up my paints so that you're able to see the colours that I'm going to be using. I also have my paint swatch card with me and this is going to help me to know what colours I have in my palette. Now the colours that are here are very similar to this very colour here which is permanent magenta and I'm just going to pick it up and put it down on a plate just for me to see how it looks like. I'm going to start off by putting it down on the paper so that I know how it looks like on paper and I'm also going to put down a lighter value so that I can see how it looks like while it is of a light shade. I really like this colour and what I want to do is I want to dull it down a little and in order for me to dull it down, I'm going to think about the colour that is opposite the purple colour on the colour wheel and from my knowledge, I know that it is yellow so I'm going to just take a touch of yellow, put it down and I'm going to see that the colour will start to dull down a little and you can see that it's starting to turn a little brownish. It is not as vibrant as before and this is how we can actually get neutral or browner tones. I also want to have a brighter shade so I'm going to take my Opera Rose, put it down and mix it with my Permanent Rose just to see what kind of colours that I can get. And when I have my Opera Rose together with my Permanent Magenta, I can see that the colour is a lot more vibrant 
so you don't have to use the exact same colors that I'm using I want you to also have the license to figure out what colors sing to you you know hellebores come in so many different colors and shades you can even decide to color it blue or red or pink and it really it's up to you because what we're doing here is we are learning to paint loosely and when we are painting loosely it also means that you know there's no real exact answer or matching of colors because what we're doing is we're trying to have fun okay and the next thing is I wanted to create that yellow that is in the middle and here I have my Snyler yellow light it is slightly tinted by my purple because my brush still had a little purple so you can see that the color looks a bit more like Indian yellow and honestly I quite like it so I'm just gonna leave it and have it as it is I'm also going to create the light value of it so the ones here are the ones where it's of a dark value and I've actually created a little of the light values for the next ones and when I say dark and light values what I mean is I'm diluting my paint from my paintbrush to create a lighter color so the white from the paper actually shows through which is why you get your light value then I'm going to look at my green and for my green I'm going to go for my hookers green so it's a green umber actually and I am just going to put it down and when it's diluted and lighter you can see that it's a very nice shade. Now I've actually mixed a little bit of my green umber with purple just so that again it gives it a bit of harmony. So you see I've actually mixed it and right now here I've mixed too much of it. So in order for me to get it back, I'm just going to add a bit more green again so that I can get back my colour and I'm going to put it down and this is a much darker tone almost greyish green okay so now that we've established our colors um, we're going to take a look at our reference picture again see if we missed out anything there's a little brown in the stems as well so i'm just going to pick the brown that's closest to what i have on my palette and that is sepia warm so i'm going to pick up my sepia warm color and i'm just going to put it down see if i like it and you know it is a little bit too dark for my liking and I feel like there's too much of a distance between this color and this color so in order for me to merge it together again I'm just gonna add a touch of my magenta and add it to my brown and see where that takes me and now I kind of like it better because you can see it's closer in color it doesn't have as wide a differentiation so that's one way in which you can kind of plan your color so now that we are finished talking about colors we are going to start our painting so I'm going to set this aside and we are going to start with the outside shape of our flowers so I'm going to be using my largest brush and the brush that I'm using here today is the silver black velvet it's a one inch brush and it's a flat brush if you don't have a flat brush you're also welcome to use a round brush because the round brush is a very versatile brush you can achieve many many shapes with it my preference is the flat brush because i like the way it moves on the paper and the shapes that i capture are pretty organic so i'm going to start off with a pretty wet wash and we are going to start with the lightest color because in watercolor we're going to paint from light to dark so just so you know you know every time you paint you always feel like the first flower might look the ugliest and that's fine um, and it probably is because you know we're still kind of getting used to how our brushes work and you know it might not necessarily be the nicest and that's fine as well because as you go on you kind of get used to the way the brush works the paper and the paint and you get better shapes and flowers so go with the flow and um, you know as always Keep it light, um, hold your brush lightly so that you'll be able to get nicer, looser shapes. So while the paint is wet, I'm going in with some darker tones so that I can get some shadows around the area. Next, I'm going to just go in. After I've done my first flower, I'm just going to go in and paint more of my outside shape flowers. and. 
these are all facing in this direction so I'm kind of playing with the length of my petals making some of them longer than others I'm also making some of the petal colors darker than others just to play around with um, you know the shapes And I'm just pulling it in and here I might want to lift a little so that I have a differentiation between the two petals and here I might want to add paint always have your paper towel handy because that's going to help you mop up any excess water that you have whether it's on your palette on your plate or even on your paper and I think that you know while we talk a lot about the different tools, we also need to remember that watercolour is a water-based medium which means that you need to really have the tools necessary for managing your water to be handy so that you're better able to control your water content and it also makes the painting process more enjoyable when you feel like you are somewhat in control. Um, so I'm going down to my third flower here and really I'm just capturing the outside shape of the flowers. I'm playing around with the darkness and lightness of colour. I'm not too worried or concerned about whether or not they are straight. I really just want to play with my tools. I'm going to take my permanent magenta and add a bit of opera rose in it just to give it a bit of pop and I'm going to add a few flowers here. Again, um, starting with the outside shape. And the wonderful thing about watercolour is that it's so beautifully transparent. You get some really nice bleeds and blends when you are playing around with the flowers, the brushes. And I'm not really painting exactly as I see, but I'm just going with whatever floral placement that I really like and just moving on from there varying my colors light and dark i am just simply adding water to my brush to dilute the mixture and then going back in so you see that i left the centers empty and that's because we're going to add yellow and it's going to be really hard to add yellow in the centers if it's filled already just because yellow is a very light color so you want to make sure that you leave your centers empty. I'm going to try and create one that's really bright, just really just opera rose. And just maybe around here, because I can see that there's one just kind of peeking out in the background. I'm painting around the flower that's at the bottom. And it gives some really nice highlights or it creates a contrast between this one and the flower that I'm painting on top right now. I want to capture flowers in the distance. So what I'm going to be doing is we're going to do some wet in wet. Now previously we've been doing wet in dry where we are just putting wet paint on dry paper. On the other hand, now I'm doing wet on wet which means that I'm wetting my surface. I'm putting an even layer of water here and you know I might just add a layer of water here as well because maybe I want some soft leaves around here or even some soft flowers around we don't know but we can always just add clean water and if it dries up it dries up if it doesn't then you know you can utilize it to get your soft um, movement and effects and the ones that are further back I want to make it a bit cooler in color so I'm going to add a tinge of blue 
to my magenta so you can see that straight away the purple cools down I can add more blue if I want and or I can add some lavender that's another one that I really like so this lavender is from Holbein and while this surface is still wet I'm just gonna go in and kind of add my petals and you can see that straight away it starts to disperse very beautifully and I'm moving my brush in the direction that I want the petals to kind of fall I'm lightening my brush, my colour and I'm going with even lighter shade even going in to paint with water so that there's a variation And while it's still wet, this is where you can kind of manipulate things. You know, I can add a bit of darkness here. And darkness here. Just to, you know, give it some depth and change in colour. I'm going to do the same for over here, where I saw that there might be some flowers here pointing downwards. I'm not really giving it so much definition because I want the flowers to be at the bottom that are very blurry. It's almost like it's losing definition. Then I'm going to add the stem and I see from the reference photo the stem is quite brownish purple. So I got my sepia which I took earlier and I'm going to mix it in with a bit of the purples and I'm just going to run my brush down and it's going to disperse, that's fine. Okay, just let it kind of move around and I'm just going to see where I want to pop it around and these are just the stems, I'm just giving a rough gauge of where I want it to be. Something about watercolour that I really love is how it has a mind of its own. It kind of goes where it wants to and that's where for us, we have to decide whether or not we want it to be as how it is. In comparison to like acrylic and oils where it is a bit more controlled because you can see where it should go and you can kind of dictate how it should look because the lines are a lot more solid there's not so much movement so the reason why your watercolor changes over time is because the water keeps moving as you are painting right you can't really see or suss out where that movement is going to be it's traveling if you're using cotton paper it's going to travel more if you're using non-cotton paper, it's going to sit on your paper. So it's a different kind of traveling, um, different kind of drying, right? So now I'm adding my greens and I am just dabbing around. I'm using greenish umber, which is actually a semi-transparent color. I'm using it at a pretty dark consistency and I'm also going to add a bit of set green to this so it's a bit brighter it adds a bit of change because it's a brighter warmer kind of green as compared to these and so far you can see the composition of this entire thing you've got some warm and cool parts and the cool parts are typically the ones towards the background and the warm parts are usually in the forefront so you can see where the opera rose is and things like that so these are considerations that you want to think about when you are dropping down your paint I'm really wanting it to be expressive and I'm just using strokes to go along I don't really want to restrict myself based on um, where it is or looks you know um, and I think when you are doing watercolour, you should always 
just go with the movement of your body and your arm, your fingers. And as I'm painting, you see that I'm not really holding my brush tight. It's literally just sitting between my fingers. My fingers are supporting it and we're just moving along, traveling with the brush. So I'm going to stop with the greens and I'm going to go back into my purples just to see where I want to add definition and create a bit more depth with my paintings. At this stage, my paper is completely dry where there are flowers. So while it's dry, you're always allowed to go back in and paint additional layers. You can go back in and add more colour if you like. And I'm just adding a bit of definition with these petals here where I'm kind of highlighting where I want it to show. I'm going with a pretty light wash and over here there's this great big white patch and I'm just figuring out or thinking if I want to close it up or add a layer. I'm still thinking about it. I'm gonna just let my thoughts run there and think about it. So I'm literally building petal by petal and adding layers as I'm going. I am figuring out my petal placement, where I want it to go and how I want my painting to move. How much detail you decide to have in your flowers really depends on where you want your focal point to be when you are creating your composition. I think that you don't have to add detail to every single flower and I want you to see that this particular flower that I'm working on is a really loose looking one and it almost looks like it's not going to match with the rest. However, because the other flowers have so much detail in them, the viewer will able, be able to fill in the gaps on their own just because there are details from the other flowers and this is where I want my viewer to just focus on one focal point and everything else to be more or less kind of like a backstage player within this painting.
so for me to get a bit of contrast in the stamens, I'm gonna create a darker color and this is basically permanent magenta with some sepia and I get a really dark version of the permanent magenta and this is for me to showcase the various areas that are shadows. So now I'm painting the shadows. I'm going in to add definition. This is the part where you kind of have to be careful as well because you don't want to over add the shadows and end up losing the colors that you already have placed down. So I'm just going petal by petal and you know, as much as I say you don't have to paint all the petals, you're really just defining its shape and then seeing where it leads you and these are all just by making marks And as I paint these dark areas, the overlaps, you get a better idea of the definition of understanding which flower is standing in front of which flower. Because there's a lot of overlap. Add a bit of Opera Rose to my dark mixture just to see what happens and I'm just going to create some definition here on this side. Each petal in this hellebore flower has got these really nice thin veins so I'm using the edge of my flat brush to pull towards the center so you get some of these really nice thin lines. You don't have to add every line, in fact what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a broken version so I don't have too many just lines moving across but rather it's almost like some broken lines that are indicative of the petals What I'm doing here when I'm going over parts that are already dry is called glazing and I'm darkening the colors that are existing. I'm not really changing colors, I'm just using the same colors to add on. My paper is damp so it's not really wet and you get a different effect when you are doing damp on wet so that's another technique to think about um, instead of wet on wet sometimes i re-wet the space that has already dried and then i go back in and do wet in wet again so i get to have really nice soft bleeds and blends 
and depending on the effect that you want this is a strategy that you can do especially when your paper has dried a lot quicker than you expect depending on the climate that you're in sometimes your paper tends to dry a lot quicker or it even takes a longer time to dry now i live in singapore and it's really humid so my paper tends to stay wet for a much longer period which is what i really love because i love using wet in wet but i also find that it's great to know that you can always go back the most important thing though is that you have to make sure that your paper is completely dry when you do that Let's move on to the top where we're going to try and add a little bit of definition but not too much at the same time because you can see that I really want my focal point to just be at the center where you can see those flowers with a lot more detail is standing out. So I don't want it to have so much detail. I like the fuzziness of it to give the flower some distance. I'm going to change it up a bit and I've got this colour called Hobine Juan and it's a, it's kind of a beige colour, I really like it a lot. Uh, I feel like it's a great one to add essence and highlights and I'm just going to use it to scatter some areas of highlights around the flower. I'm going to use it quite sparingly, not very much. And not really in the background because like I said, in the background you want cool colours. So I'm going to switch over to my smaller round brush because I want to get into smaller details and I am going to continue to use my greens. I am using my greenish umber here and I'm just going to create a bit of definition around the leaves where I believe there is shadow. So this gives the piece a little bit more depth. I'm also going in to smaller areas to kind of fill in the gaps because here there's a white and it looks a little bit odd so I'm just going to go in and add leaves instead. So I'm adding really dark greens in there because you know inside the foliage is going to be pretty dark and you want to be consistent with your painting. 
So make sure that you add those dark leaves where they should be. I'm going to pull one out here, just randomly. And then I am going to just soften the edges by adding clean water. Gonna give it a bit of a line so it looks like there's some movement. So what I like to do is when I'm painting my leaves, I kind of cut into the petals, so it looks as though it's embedded within this foliage. There isn't that gap. It also shows a contrast between the petals and the foliage which I feel is a really nice touch and I'm going to cool down my green I'm just going to add a bit of blue in there to cool it down because my greens are going to be a bit different around here so I feel like there isn't enough foliage here so I'm just going to pull out something so don't feel too attached to leaf shapes you know it can really be any shape you want it to be the key idea here is for you to lean into how organic and also that they don't exactly have a specific shape well i know that in school we've been taught that leaves look a certain way and you know i'm here to tell you that you can create whatever shape you want when it comes to your own leaves. Any shape. It doesn't have to have a certain definition. As long as you kind of... I suppose in a flower painting like that, when anyone sees green, they're going to assume that it's a leaf anyway. So you can have the license to kind of create whatever style of leaf you want in that sense then i'm just just because it feels very heavy here i'm just gonna pull something here to balance this white space out so this is something to think about whenever we are doing composition and you know instead of straight lines always work with some curved lines so i'm just going to create a curved line here and then I'm going to add some leaves. So I've actually add in, added in a bit of sap green. It's a bit brighter, but it's too bright for my liking. So I'm muting it down with some of my purple mixture as well as the greenish umber that I had. And I'm just going to throw them in here. I'm also going to soften the edges and add water so that it looks like it's softer and I can play around with the colour and the depth again So I'm taking inspiration from the reference photo and seeing that um, in between the flowers there are a lot of leaves so I'm just kind of throwing them in to again give the painting more accuracy and I suppose even though it's loose there are still some rules around um, some areas as well that we have to think about and consider so that the painting looks cohesive and I've got my neon colors here and these are by Kiss Hole I'm just going to pop some of them around the centers just a little bit
So now is the fun part. We're going to add in the stamens. So I'm going to be using gouache for the center of the flowers. These are by Hobain and I'm just going to use a mixture of some of these colors to add the essence in the middle. Um, so for gouache, the, it's basically an opaque version of watercolor. It is going to be a great tool to layer on top of your watercolor. So I'm just going to wet my brush a little and pick up some of this gouache. And when you're going to layer, you have to make sure that it's got pretty thick consistency so that it stays opaque. If you use a lot of water, it's going to be very runny and it's not going to look as opaque anymore. It's going to be harder for the stamens to actually show through. So I'm just going to fill the centers with this yellow and I'm not really fussing about where whether it's exactly that shape but I'm just going to fill the centers and I've got some stamens really sticking out so I'm going to put them out here as well and use the fine side of my brush to kind of connect some of it you don't have to connect all it's the key idea of painting loosely. I'm going to darken the parts of my gouache here so I'm basically just adding a little of my pink mixture and suddenly it feels a bit more orangey I'm not adding too much because again I don't want it to be runny I want it to be of a nice thick consistency and pink is basically a family of red, right? So you're gonna get a slight variation with your orange, but I like that because then it creates some interest in your painting. Such a beautiful orange. Kind of creating my own license here and putting in colors that I don't really see in the reference photo. And then I'm also going to add a touch of leaf green because there's a slight tinge of green in some of these areas and it's really just a little that I'm adding, very little. Okay, now I feel quite happy with what I have. However, I feel like the stamens are literally just sitting on top and I want it to be seated. So I am going in with permanent magenta 
in the spaces that are where the stamens are to give it some shadow and depth. So what I'm doing is I'm going in with my other brush to soften it, soften the hard lines. You go in and add those dark bits. You have to make sure that your yellows are dry because if they're not, they're going to blend into your dark bits and then it's just going to be a real blendy mess. That's happened to me before, so. Um, but you know, when, when accidents like that happen, it's a great opportunity for us to learn. So I think I want to take you up close so that you can see it See me work on this um, better. So let's take you closer. So I'm basically darkening the insides of the stamen here. I'm adding um, some areas of shadow because you know um, this is going to create that contrast between the stamens it's also going to bring some life to your painting then after I've darkened it I'm basically going in and softening that so here you really get to see how I'm creating that depth between the flowers and the stamens. You know, you don't have to do for everyone. I find that when you add that darker layer in between your stamens, you can really start to see the entire painting start to pop. The yellow doesn't just sit flat on the flower, but rather there is a little bit of that distance with that shadow between the stamen and then the petals. So go in and decide which of your stamens you want to add that shadow. You don't have to do it for every single stamen because there's a lot and it also depends on your painting, which ones you want to have in your focal point. Now, I'm also taking the opportunity to just glaze over some areas because I find that as I start to add darker layers, sometimes my flowers can end up looking washed out. So I'm also starting to just pay attention to which flower I need to add a little bit more colour and you can do that by glazing. See, like this one was just... I haven't done anything with it yet and you can see the difference between this one and this one so I'm just going to go in and kind of define it a little and straight away you'll be able to see a difference And you know, um, other than adding the shadows, you can again always go back and add in the yellows if you want um, that you had before. If you feel like there isn't enough. And you know, the stamens also have highlights. So you see, the stamens have so many more layers than just white right you can create so much depth into it if you want to add depth into it and i have mixed a lighter version of the yellow so it's a little duller almost looks like beige but i'm just going to add it in here to some areas
So I want to take a look at the entire composition and kind of see if I'm done. Mm, I might just add a little bit of like dark green detail here and you know I noticed that this um, pink flower at the back was neglected so I'm just going to add in like one or two lines just to kind of showcase that I know that it exists when I zoom out and look at the entire painting, one thing I notice is that because the centers were so dark and have so much detail, I felt like the petals started to look washed out. So in the next part of this painting, you're going to watch me basically do a glaze over some areas just to darken it and also to give the whole painting a bit more cohesiveness so that it doesn't look like there's just a lot of black marks in the center and then the rest of the petals look very washed out. Now I know that this video was a really long one but I really really appreciate you being here and if you've gotten this far it shows how much commitment you have to really want to learn and paint. So don't forget to hit the like button so that I know that these are the types of videos that you really like and also I cannot wait for you to learn more together with me on this channel. If you want to learn more from me through workshops, I have workshops available on my website and I'm going to be linking all of it in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me today because this video was so fun to make and these flowers were so fun to paint. In fact, I did not expect to add this much of detail to the painting but really I had so much fun with it, adding in the details in the centre, the petals and so on. I had so much fun showing you how I painted the hellebores. If you have come this far, I want to show you my utmost gratitude for going through the entire video and your dedication really shows. Now the hellebore is so versatile because you can paint it really loosely or you can continue to add those details that I continued to build up. Now beyond adding details, I also want you to know that painting is really about putting different elements together and showcasing which of the flowers you really want at the forefront versus the flowers in the background. You can see that I have exhibited that through using various techniques as well as creating these techniques with different effects. Now, I would love to hear from you what were some of your light bulb moments. Share with me in the comments because this is going to be so helpful for me when I create more videos for you to learn from. I cannot wait to paint with you again. I will see you the next time.